Welcome back, everybody. I'm Sean LaFlock. I'm here with Scotty Hagnes. This is Conversations Fitness, Wellness, and Longevity. Scott, how goes it, man? It's going good? How are you? Yeah. Doing just fine myself. Um, we're looking more and more similar by the day here, Scott, with our hair I'm not going to actually have a little bit of stubble. But, uh, yeah, I guess. I can... Yeah, man. I'm, uh, I'm trying to... A little, little summer do right now. Trying to keep it a little shorter. Uh, mm-hmm. I was just rain, uh, driving through, uh, oh, I don't know, about three inches of rain just now. Uh, I think we, we this is the hardest it's rained this uh, year thus far. So we are well in the thick of summer here. And I imagine, oh, in about 30 minutes or so, it'll probably be sunny as can be. Oh, wow. You know, cool and cloudy day. We've, it's been dry for at least a month for the most part. But we kind of transition into a bit of an early summer. But we're getting, it looks like we're getting rain this weekend. There you go. So uh, this last uh, last weekend, I was in uh, West Palm Beach, Florida, for the uh, 2018 CrossFit Regionals, coaching my uh, athlete Myra Brandt. Um, she's uh, she turned 38 on Monday, so she was one of the older competitors there, and uh, there was actually some 17 year olds in the field. So uh, yeah, they made a point of pointing that out during the broadcast. Of uh, mm-hmm. you know, there was uh, some some young females in in, in the uh, in the field that were well within the uh, age that uh, Myra could have been their mother. So, uh, yeah. Overall, it was a, it was a, a, another very cool experience. I'm really happy that they brought it back to West Palm because it was a great great crowd. Um, I, I heard from the uh, city commissioner here uh, that uh, the, uh, the 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 county executives and the uh, uh, athletic board really had a uh, really good experience with the CrossFit and uh, they were really, really happy with how everything ran. Um, overall, you know, again, it ran as smooth as can be. Uh, they are really, really on point and dialed in when it comes to running the competitions now and keeping everything on time. Obviously, the fact that there's a broadcast online and then the CBS is broadcasting it as well makes it much more of a... Uh, uh, much more need for everything to, to run smoothly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, like I, I kind of talked about last time, Myra was kind of coming in with a bit of a knee issue. Uh, she's actually got a torn, uh, posterior meniscus, uh, that she, you know, was probably degrading over time and then just kind of a pop about a week before while practicing some pistols and, uh, you know, it swelled up on her and, uh, you know, definitely played in the back of her mind. So, uh, you know, now that things are over, we're going to address that and see what we want to do with it. But uh, we're looking to get a therapeutic use exemption to do a cortisone shot and see where that goes. But in terms of the competition, um, you know, the first workout was at triple three and uh, the row went well. The double unders were pretty good. And uh, I think the run was slower than what she did in training, but the other two areas were a little bit faster. So um, I think in training she did just over 47 minutes and then she was just under 47 minutes there. But the biggest concern, and again, I, I, and uh, this is something that I kind of uh, want to pose to you, is after that workout she's pretty much smashed. And now she's got to come back and do Linda. For a, a mm-hmm. very high aerobic uh, session like that, Scott, uh, what are your thoughts in terms of recovery to get ready for their next session? Ooh, yeah, I mean, I always like, you know, easily, easily digestible carbs and, and some sort of protein. Um, no solid food you know, isn't that long. I mean, what, uh, you know, what was the time frame, like, from the time you finished full three to... Like, then about, like, like two, and a half, two and a half hours. Yeah, so not, not a lot of time there, and you probably still want to come in fairly empty. Yep. Um, refueled, uh, I would probably suggest... You know, doing mostly liquids through that whole whole phase. See a little bit of light fat in there somewhere just to, to not, you know, have any blood sugar issues. But that seems to be, you know, the best best hope. And then po- potentially some various breathing drills and things to try to um, tone the system down a little bit. Would yep. be, I can imagine pretty jacked up off in her 48 minutes of 47 minutes of that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, her stomach was turned over pretty good, and she, she usually does get kind of stomach aches during running, but uh, it was obviously very uh, substantial just because of the uh, effort that she gave. I mean, um, she, she, there was, yeah. there was uh, 
definitely not for lack of trying this weekend. Her effort was very high level the entire time. But um, and again, this is kind of something we'll talk about in a little bit. But in terms of you know knowing how much you can actually give versus what your body can actually put out. So uh, mm-hmm. the other thing that we had we were really grateful for it was. Uh, one of our guys, Martin Fitzpatrick from Massage Kite, actually volunteered his service the entire weekend for her. So she was getting massages throughout the weekend, before and after. And he's really, really, really yeah. good. Nice. Um, yeah. That's awesome. You know, and, and uh, he, he, very in tune with everything and knows how to uh, get them, you know, her, you know, athletes warmed up, but also how to kind of cool them down a little bit and work through areas. So he was fantastic the entire time. And that's something that's huge. I mean, imagine you had a massage therapist with you for every event. That's that's a big advantage there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. The uh, Linda was the second. And what, what did you guys end up doing between the two? A little massage. As far as a refueling she strategy. Had, she had a, a, like a, like a perfect food bar uh, afterward, and mm-hmm. I don't think she digested that until she got out onto the floor. So in retrospect, yeah, maybe just staying with so. a shake, and then that's it, and just fluids. Yeah. Just so that, uh, you know, because the digestive system was pretty much shut down. So rather yep. than try to yeah. bombard it with food, just keep it liquids. And, and again, I think that's, you know, that's a great conversation to have with any athlete is and, – and for people who are recreational athletes, it's like that's why you have protein shakes or, or post-workout shakes. It's not because it's going to get you better results – or faster results, it's because that's literally all your body can tolerate between training sessions or competitions. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. So then we went on to Linda, and like I said, she had pretty much digested what her food was three hours prior at, as she was walking out on the floor. Didn't do any caffeine, which in res- retrospect we definitely should have. Uh, mm-hmm. then the, the warm up for Linda was, and, and for those who aren't, uh, aware, Linda is the deadlift bench press squat clean workout, uh, for that, just warming up the bench press and sets of four and five, just to make sure that that's appropriate, uh, making sure just big building up to the touch and go deadlift at 220 for like a set of five, just to make sure that's ready to rock. Uh, the squat clean, just doing a few reps of singles and then just getting the aerobic system back, you know, just getting sweating and moving again, uh, and kind of pushing some of the lactate and, uh, and, uh, fluid through the body. And, you know, you did a 47 minute hard go less than three hours before. There's not going to be too much of a warm up. The body's already ready. Um, so the, uh, I think the, 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 Triple three definitely took it out of her a little bit and uh, didn't have quite as much pop in the legs on the cleans. And that's kind of where she got slow. Uh, the bench press what did, you know, wasn't much of an issue. The deadlifts were solid. Uh, however, they just, uh, you know, in terms of transitions, that's where a lot of the time was kind of given up uh, is, is going, you know, really being deliberate and slow between transitions. And you could see it two ways. One, you could see it as like, well, you know, She's being smart and she, you know, knows how she, how far she can go and how much rest she needs. But it's no about, much. it's about minimizing that rest and being able to continue to put out the output and not have your workout go up and down and then up and down and then up and down. And you'll see the best competitors are staying here the entire time with only a slight amount of creep. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, that square, I kind of first saw the, the, the background of like just fatigue in general, just kind of like look a little beat down, you know, don't have that mm-hmm. spark. So yeah, I was like, probably oh, seen, yeah. I right, say so you've seen, you've seen her training enough to be able to spot that pretty easily that it's something's not, not exactly, everything's not firing at all cylinders. Yeah. I mean, again, there's the difference between like, you know, someone who's like suffering through a workout and still fighting and someone who's being beat by a workout. You know, she she wasn't executing poorly. It just didn't have that extra gear. Yeah. You know? Yep. Yep. So uh, second day comes along and she actually felt better after the Linda, uh, especially on her knee. Uh, Afterward, we would go back to my uh, apartment before she had to go back to the real world, like her kids and family and that kind of stuff, she would just do some recovery. She would get into the, uh, uh, just kick up her heels and eat. And we would do that there. So she can kind of just decompress for a little bit, watch some of the uh, competition from the day and then go home and then go get some rest. 
for me personally, I, you know, I was uh, a little frustrated with day one, uh, but you know, I, 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 just because I have high expectations and I know how talented she is, but like, there's nothing, I think I was also more, more frustrated from the fact that like, there's nothing you can do. Like, this is just what we have right now. Yeah. Um, Day two started off with uh, the handstand walk workout, which is a great workout to start out with. She did her muscle ups in two sets or three sets. She just did triples the entire time, did all the handstand walking, no breaks, and did some amazing saves. And then uh, the pistols she was able to do, and that was a big concern going in. She was very nervous about being able to do the pistols, but she did pretty much no problem. Uh, you know, the limiters there were just the amount of time that the pistols took because she was about 25 reps shy of finishing, but everything else was unbroken. So she just uh, needed to be able to cycle through pistols a little quicker. Maybe it'll be uh, a little bit less rest between uh, sets of muscle ups, but that's uh, an execution wise. I was happy with how that went and I anticipated a pretty good event there just because I knew she uh, was, was well within the, uh, the, the ability of those skills. Mm -hmm. uh, the cool. second event of that day was the burpee, uh, <laughs> the burpee uh, power snatch burpee workout. Snatch. And that yeah. one there uh, kind of like, that's the one we got to kind of talk about and, and, and going forward, determine it. Cause that, that's, that's a very much, if you're good at CrossFit, you're going to do good at that workout. And by, by CrossFit, I mean the type of, high aerobic slash lactate ability that, you know, uh, six to nine minutes of hard go, uh, and see it in person definitely changed my perception of it because, uh, you don't realize that it's a high power output workout into a higher power output workout. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, yeah. you know, even if you do good on those 135 pound power snatches, if you slow on, on the 75, there's 125 on the first half and then 75 in the second half, the power out should, should remain the same because now you're going faster on the 75 pound snatches and your burpees could technically be faster as well. So, uh, when you have an athlete there, Scott, who is proficient at, at cycling the barbell yet then kind of gets halfway through that workout and the power output starts to slip a bit. What are your thoughts in terms of what is the the what is the limiting factor for that athlete, knowing that they can cycle, they're they're proficient at the the movements and that kind of thing. Yeah, so you're, you're saying like a new fatigue on the seventy five pound relative to what they were putting out when they're on the heavier bar. Yeah, earlier. yeah, I think that's um, probably actually kind of aerobic system dealing with the, you know localized fatigue. Um, quite potentially, you know. Yeah. Uh, you pay a heavy debt for the the heavy reps earlier on, and it ends up making the uh, the lighter, you know, unduly taxing. And you know that was an interesting one when it came out because so like, huh, this is not the format we typically have seen, nor is even comes out in workouts that I've seen, you know. But I had a feeling that it would be unusually uh, taxing for some. Mm. And that might be a exposed, you know, a limiter, a limiter there. Um, what would did she like have any particular, you know, complaint? Like my grip was blown up. I could hang on the bar or, you know, it just felt heavier than it should. Or was it just, I couldn't catch my breath. So I had to work, you know, I, I've, uh, you know, it, it, that, that, that's always a very challenging uh, uh, aspect of coaching Myra because uh, it's just like, I just couldn't go faster. You know, you just don't have that gear. And that's kind of what I was talking about. You just yeah. don't have that extra thing. And I think it's even more, I think it's even deeper than just the aerobic system. I think for her, I think she's yeah. probably dealing with a lot of adrenal issues and uh, fatigue issues that it's not going to be about well, training. Was... It's more about. Yeah, that was my other thought. Yep, go ahead. That uh, inability to get the sympathetic drive or, you know, produce enough cortisol to make the effort you know, doable. Yeah. Um, so, you know, because typically you do something in an experienced athlete like triple three, that's going to throw you in a pretty deep parasympathetic curve for a few days, potentially. Yeah. yeah. And now you're a, you're a day out, maybe over a day out because that was workout two. And now, you know, that's sort of trying to happen, but because you're still competing, you're attempting to 
you know, squeeze as much juice, you know, sympathetic juice out of the lemon as you can, but that's, things are running dry. Yeah, I think that's why one of the biggest aspects of CrossFit in general that people don't appreciate is the amount of toll that it takes on you, uh, you know, both, both uh, uh, you know, hormonally and uh, physiologically is that it just, uh, it demands a lot from you and you don't realize it that over time you are carving away at something that, you know, has to be restored eventually if you want to be good at the sport. But if you go too far down that rabbit hole, uh, you're, you're stuck and then you're going to have to do a, a lot of work to go back to where you possibly could have been. And maybe it doesn't happen. You know, there are some people who just mm -hmm. completely burn out and then that's it. I, I saw uh, Zach Anderson, Z.A. Anderson, who won the, the regional back in 2013, who looked like a world beater. And I believe he finished top 10 at the games that year. And then that was it. Like there was no more. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, I heard afterward that he, he was a very high level wrestler as well. So there's probably a huge metabolic and physiological demand there. But you look at this guy, he's made out of granite. He's got all the intangibles. He's got good mechanics on his body, but it just looks like he's dead inside. And I think mm -hmm. that's a very important thing to understand as a coach is like, you know, recognizing that and be like having that, you know, terrible conversation, but a necessary conversation with an athlete and be being like, listen, man, you're not going to get better by training. The only way you're going to get better, hopefully, is by going not training or maybe actually getting more healthy and then perhaps going back into this. Um, and I know even me saying that is kind of like a, a saying that as the reflection in the mirror kind of stuff because I know where I am now versus where I was, let's say, in the open. And pretty much every training session mm -hmm. that I have now, feel, feel, have now feels good. Like there's not a training session mm -hmm. I go in now where I'm like, I can't lift a weight or whatever. Like I think the, in terms of the volume and intensity and uh, frequency is perfect now. I train for about an hour a day. Um, it's mostly strength training with like maybe two long, slow aerobic sessions of 20 minutes a week. Uh, some, you know, uh, high intensity uh, intervals of six, six to eight seconds, 10 minutes twice a week. And then mm -hmm. like just some core work. I mean, that's it. And, and working on strength, you know what I mean? I think that's the majority of what, uh, 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 let's say, a burnt-out CrossFitters training should look like. So taking my medicine for the last <laughs> yeah. uh, two-plus months, and I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. And even with not non-optimal sleep, you know, still dealing with a little bit of sleep issues, but not having that constant fatigue. And I think that's been a huge uh, part of it. But it's, it's not something that you're going to experience until you get like – six to 10 weeks out of doing like hard, hard training. You're going to do it for like two weeks and be like, this isn't working, whatever. And then you're just going to gradually kind of see your life start to change a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. However, uh, that's not the case right now for Miss Myra because now she's got to make a push for the games in Madison, but just to kind of tire right. the rest of the weekend. Uh, she had some issues with the standard on the handstand push-up. She's never had handstand push-up issues, but apparently they were being extra uh, careful of uh, ladies not putting their butt to the wall or overextending from their lower back. So she got hit with – I think she, 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 she was planning on doing 15, 15, uh, 10, 10. She, she came down for her first 15 reps and they asked the judge, where am I at? And he said six. Oh. She didn't hear the no reps. Yeah, like she and he was like, "It's not my job to, to count your reps." That was the, the response. But I mean, uh, yeah, that was pretty much where the workout was 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 uh, was one of the loss right there. Uh, she she you know again just fighting from behind, and I've been there before where some hiccup happens in the beginning, and now you're just trying to chase after something that's not there, and so that was a bit of a, a kick in the face there. But she she performed very well on the final workout with the rope climbs and thrusters. Uh, the rope climb technique was much, much, much better than what she tried in training and from what she had done before ever. So if there is another rope climb workout, we've just taken something that is an okay to a strength. So that's really cool to see. And that's something actually we discussed that's last awesome. week about how you uh, all of a sudden are thrown into this, you know, uh, uh, you know, whirlwind of different movements and am I good at this and am I good at that? And you, you have to either adapt or fail. And she adapted very well when it came to the rope climbs. Um, and even thinking back on the pistols look pretty damn good too. So I'm glad that you go through it so that you kind of improve upon those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So onward now, 
how many weeks that in the cycle? I haven't counted them out. It must be about roughly seven week cycle, maybe. Uh, yeah, I think it's like uh, sixty days or something like that. I can look it up. Uh, it was sixty days of as of like you know Sunday or something like uh, that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so about the, yeah, seven eight seven eight weeks. Yeah, seven eight weeks or something like that. So. Uh, you know, you're the coach all of a sudden, Scott, you know, knowing that this person just went through, uh, water, Waterpalooza qualifying, Waterpalooza prep, Waterpalooza, um, you know, the actual competition into open prep into, uh, master's qualifier prep into the master's qualifier into regionals prep to regionals quali or regional qualifier now going into the CrossFit Games in six weeks, what the hell do you even? What's your first thought about like where? Like how do you even assess what's going on there, Scott? A truckload of adrenal and thyroid support, maybe. <laughs> A good point. Yeah, that sounds brutal. So at this point, you know, you, obviously the biggest prize is the one waiting at you know at the game. So yeah, you gotta you gotta work, but you gotta work smart. I, this is where I would really dig into attempting to, you know, get a, a handle on what's going on physiologically and yeah. really be fluid with the, the day's training and programming to, she obviously needs to do a lot of work, but, you know, less is going to be more because if you don't want to go in, you know, kind of like you said, some of the workouts were, or you just don't have it to give, um, it would be something like maybe, um, uh, you know, less, less is more put the work toward the things that you might face that you don't know that you don't do that often. Some of the odd stuff that you're almost certainly going to see at the games, you know, get maintenance on most of the other stuff. In terms of adrenal and thyroid support, Scott, what were this, what, were, what would be some of the things that you would uh, look toward? Obviously one thing off the top of my head is just eating enough. That's one thing, but uh, what are some ideas that you have? Yeah, for sure, eating enough, but then, you know, looking at, you know, sleep quality or if there is waking, like where is it in the cycle, um, making sure uh, electrolytes, salt, you know, it's, it's all you waste so, sodium a ton when you become slightly functionally hypothyroid, uh, as most athletes are. Mm -hmm. um, that would be another one. Um, and really doing, you know, this, this soft stuff the other side you know breath work um or whatever side you know whether it's you know easy ocean swims or things that are restorative for the individual and it's gonna be different you gotta give them something that is restorative for them yeah um and and trying to kind of balance the yin and, yin and the yang a little bit to kind yep. of get them as close as you can i mean at the end of the day, outside of going, you know, an illegal pharmaceutical route, there's really no way you're going to make too significant of a changes hormonally. Yep. while Still trying to train hard in that short of a time. It just, it's just not happening. Yep. Uh, so kind of just got to, you know, dance with the girl who got you there kind of deal. And, and try to keep the, the wheels. Best you can. Yeah. Try to keep the wheels from falling off completely. <laughs> Keep the wheels on the bus. Yeah. yeah I, I like the fact yeah. that uh, the, the, the idea of, uh, you know, uh, not or, or or not doing too much and uh, keeping the volume appropriate, especially this far out. Um, and uh, you know, just kind of piggybacking off what you've been talking about, like this week. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday was completely off. Thursday was just like a skill swim session of doing drills for like twenty minutes, and then like a ten by fifty with like you know twenty seconds rest, uh, just to kind of breathe a little bit. And you know, the the first thing that she said was. Man, it feels good to be outside in the sun. Yeah, that's kind of telling. Like, oh, this feels so good. Like, yeah, like, okay, cool. Like, yeah. So that's an appropriate workout for where we want to be right now. And then today was like twenty minutes of skill run work, and then like uh, three by four hundred at like a. Uh, it was supposed to be a, a one mile uh, or a three k pace. It turned out to be more of a one mile pace, but. I guess that kind of shows again, like where she's at and, and, uh, also like what she wants to do. Like she wants to go work hard. You know, she's, she's that, uh, that, uh, Husky who you strap to the sled and they just want to go hard, even though they may not be in a position to do that just yet. 
Mm-hmm. Or yeah. you don't want them to do that yet. Like, Finding listen, ways to put on the brakes. Yeah, let's pull Pump it the back. Brake. <laughs> and just thinking yeah. about it, like I'm like three by five, four hundred was perfect for today. I'm like any more, and she would have been been going more. And uh, you know, she's off on Saturday, and then we're just gonna do some Olympic lifting on Sunday. But definitely some considerations going forward of keeping the volume maybe relatively low, but maybe <laughs> playing around with a little bit more frequency on some of the things just to gain confidence and uh, see how uh, mm-hmm. she responds. So yeah. basically for me as a coach, I'm kind of looking at her and seeing when the fire is going to come out in a workout. You know, when mm-hmm. she, we, when, when yeah. she gets done with a row workout and says, oh, all right, that felt good. Ah, oh, okay, cool. And until I kind of see that, exactly. I'm going to keep that volume very, very much with a close eye, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. Yes, that's kind of exactly what I was kind of trying to say in different words. But yeah, be very you know, just observe those cues to really like wait, wait this time. What are some other cues aside from seeing the fire in somebody, Scott? Are there any kind of things that you ask your clients about that give you an insight into whether or not they're ready to train and ready to hit it? Yeah, I mean, when you do it long enough, especially and you know your athlete, like, there's a lot of visual clues you can pick up on, you know. They look like they're running into the gym. Or I like the way you would describe the uh, person, you know, like there's I've seen these folks that they don't appear fully alive inside, right? They they may come in and crush it, but like drag themselves in, they manage to get themselves to go on. They lay down in training and they kind of drag themselves out of the gym, you know? Yep. There's some cues you can, it doesn't have to be that extreme, but they're subtle, right? Because they appear to have extra, really holding on to every ounce of energy to just do what they need done. I mean, it's hard to drive, but if you know, you know, how's it going? How'd you feel since last time? Just a couple of just basic questions, you know, and like pretty much what they say, not necessarily their words. Yep. You know, the way they say it, there's all yeah. kinds of nonverbals that are here and this is where being, you know, very, uh, intuitive and knowing your your athlete. Yep, and also letting a lot. And, and also, I hear a lot of experienced coaches. You know, oh, uh, you know, have all these various great tools. We've talked about them some in the past. There's all kinds of metrics, but it still doesn't beat the simplicity and the accuracy. Of knowing your athlete and just asking. Yeah. Them you're absolutely right. Just being observant. You're absolutely right, Scott. And I think that uh, we'll leave on that note for today, my man. You got anything else? I know. About to go hit right number two of the day. All right. Very cool. Okay. Well, I'm Sean yeah. LaFlock. You can get me at Sean at CrossFitDiaryBeach.com. I'm Scott Haggins. You get me at Scott at CrossFitPortland.com. Awesome, Scotty. I will talk to you next week, my friend. Will do. Take care. Later, brother.